Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to church. Welcome to this evening service. And uh, it's a service that we're uh, concluding our look at the, uh, the Psalms and also a service where we are sharing communion together, which is going to be great. So I'm so glad that you could join us. Hope you've had a great day today. Hope you've had a great week this past week. And I really hope and pray that you've arrived at this service with high hopes, high expectations that the Lord is going to meet with every single one of us. I do believe that's the case. He's here with us. He's going to meet with us and he's going to do what only God can do in our lives. So do be open to that as we spend this time together. And we're going to start our service with a song of praise. So let's worship him together in song.
Fantastic, wonderful. Well, like I say, we are at the final instalment of looking at the Psalms, the, 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 the message within the Psalms, and looking at um, how the Psalms are arranged into five books or five sections to mirror the Torah, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. So we're in number five this evening. Let me read to you some verses from Psalm 119, which uh, is within the fifth book of the, of the Psalms. So Psalm 119. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil and they walk only in his paths. You have charged us to keep your commands carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. So, Lord, I pray that you would just open our, our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds to a deeper level of understanding and appreciation of your word. Lord, I thank you that the more we get to understand about the Bible, the more awestruck we are, the majesty and the wonder, the care and the love and the reality of God. So take us further down that path, I pray, as we look at your word this evening, in Jesus' name. Well, like I say, so here we are in the final, uh, the fifth and final instalment of a, a look at the Psalms as they relate to and reflect on the first five books of the Bible. Now, I've been saying that the people who arranged the 150 Psalms that we have in the Bible did so in order to provide a commentary on the Torah, the law or the Pentateuch. And we've looked at Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus and Numbers. And now this evening we're looking at Deuteronomy at its central message and at how Psalms 107 to 150 make that book personal and bring it to life. Now, as I've been saying, the names that we have for the books of the Old Testament are not the original Hebrew names. The original Hebrew names are simply whatever the book in question starts off with. So Genesis starts off with, in the beginning, Bereshit. And so that's the original, that's the Hebrew name of the book. Well, the book of Deuteronomy starts off with the words, Eleha Devarim. These are the words. And so Eleha Devarim is the Hebrew name of this book, or just Devarim for short. So why do we call it Deuteronomy? Well, because Deuteronomy literally means repetition of the law. It was written in about 1400 BC, 40 years after the Israelites had escaped from Egypt. And they were now on the plains of, of uh, Moab on the brink of entering <clears throat> the promised land. And Moses is now 120 years old, soon to die, and God is saying, this is it. You are about to enter into the promised land after all this time of, um, of, of wandering in the desert. <clears throat> so right at this critical juncture... God leads them back to the place of hearing the law all over again. And the reason for this is, as Deuteronomy 10 verses 12 and 13 say, <clears throat> and now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? He requires only that you fear the Lord your God and live in a way that pleases him and love him and serve him with all your heart and soul. And you must always obey the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. Now, that's really the central message of the book of Deuteronomy. 
that Psalms 107 to 150 pick up on. God says, I have got such great plans for you, but to activate those plans, you have to base your life on the word of God and become all that he has destined you to be. You have to become the holy people that I've called you to be. You're not like all the other nations around you. You're special. So be special. Live differently by being obedient to the law. And you will come into your inheritance. Now, there are a lot of strange sounding things that happen in the book of Deuteronomy that become clearer when we understand that central theme. Such as, um, for example, Deuteronomy chapter 14, where uh, there's a whole long list of, uh, of what you can eat and what you can't eat. Ending up with a law prohibiting the cooking of a young goat in its mother's milk. Uh, why, why make that rule? <laughs> I mean, who's going to do that? Why tell them that they can't eat certain birds or marine animals, but others are okay? Because... To follow through on that example of cooking a, a young goat in its mother's milk, that was a pagan ritual that was practised at that time by the nations around them. What God was saying was, don't take on the practices and the customs of the pagans around you. You're different. You're holy. You're mine. Don't compromise and become like all the rest. Understand my word, stay true to it, live it out in your life and you will prosper. And the psalmist takes up that theme and says, blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. That's 100, Psalm 119 verses 1 and 2. You want to be blessed in the promised land? Then walk blamelessly. That is to say, walk according to the law of the Lord. Keep his statutes and seek him wholeheartedly. You're on the brink of greatness. Don't blow it now by slipping into compromise. You've come so far. Don't settle for mediocrity now. And to this new generation, facing this new start in the promised land, God promise, promises blessing and prosperity so long as they remain faithful to God's word. Now, how are they to do that? How are they to possess the promise? Well, it starts with remembering God's goodness. God challenges them never to forget where they've come from. Never forget that it was him who rescued them out of slavery, provided for them through their wilderness wanderings, protected them from overwhelming opposition. Ask now about the former days, long before your time, from the day God created man on the earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other, has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Says Deuteronomy 4, verse 32. All of the laws and the regulations that they are to keep are there to remind them of the covenant that they have entered into with, the God, with, with God and to remind them of the call for them to be holy, set apart for his purposes on account of all that he's done for them. Never forget what he has done for you. Especially in times of shortage or when the temptation is to compromise and cut corners. So Psalm 107 verses 8 to 9 says, Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things that he has done for them. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Reflect on his track record and choose to trust him. Remember his goodness when you're tempted to follow the gods of the people who are, uh, you're going to meet in the promised land. 
Remember the wonderful things that he has done when you were mingling with the Canaanites who worshipped the fertility god and sacrificed to the god of rain. Remember the Lord and all that he's done for you. Remember when you were thirsty, he satisfied you. Remember when you were hungry, he filled you with good things. How are you going to remember? Well, Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 to 9 tells us, these commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them to your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and your gates. Now that is what the psalmist is seeking to do. That's what he's reflecting upon. How can a young man, or young person rather, stay pure, says Psalm 119, verses 9 to 16? By obeying your word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. I have recited aloud all the regulations you've given us. I've rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. We cannot live out what we cannot remember. So what are you and I doing to help us to remember God's word? Well, read as much as you can of it. Memorize it, recite it, discuss it, live it out. This is what we have connect groups for. So join a connect group, get involved in the life of, of the church and sort out your daily routine of Bible reading. It's not optional if you want to prosper and grow and become all that God has created you to be. It starts with remembering God's goodness. But possessing the promise develops by learning the lessons of the past. See, the Israelites, as we've been seeing in detail in recent weeks, have just been on a 40-year journey. 40 years ago, God had got the Israelites out of slavery, but it took 40 years to get the slavery out of the Israelites. 40 years of hard-learned lessons. Now God was saying, those lessons were there to lead you to fully rely on me, to be holy and to live according to my laws. Those lessons weren't random. They were designed to grow wholehearted trust and obedience in God's word. And now, 40 years later, those hard-won lessons were about to be put to the test. So, as the psalmist says, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I may learn your decrees. The purpose of hard times, so far as God is concerned, is that they lead us to a fresh dependence on him. And that dependence is measured by obedience to his word. Hard times cause us to take the Bible seriously. They cause us to seek to live how the Bible says we should live. It's the hard times, horrible though they are, that bring us into obedience to God's word. So verse 75 of Psalm 119 I know, O Lord, that your laws are righteous and in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Now, like I was saying, the overriding theme of Deuteronomy is the call to base your life on the word of God in order to become all that he's called you to be. 
And often it's in the hardest times, the wildest of storms, that the breakthrough of, of, of truly believing in and trusting in God's word is made. So the Israelites had 40 years of storms that were designed to bring them to full reliance on God's word, the law. And now on the brink of needing to cash that in, they are reminded once again of that law. But this time it takes on a whole new meaning because this time they're hearing it in the light of all the lessons of the past. Now the word has become real and living and active. They're actually living it. And the challenge is, don't forget that. Never forget the rock from which you are cut, the quarry from which you are hewn. As you move towards your future, be obedient to his word. Now that's God's call on our lives just as it was for the Israelites as they camped on the plains of Moab. The blessings that God had in store for the Israelites were contingent on them being obedient to the law that had been given to them through Moses at, uh, as the terms of the covenant. And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask you ask of you, but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commandments and decrees that I'm giving you today for your own good. It says Deuteronomy chap, uh, verses 12 to, uh, chapter 10, verses 12 to 13. Obedience to his word, that's all he asks what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than the offering of the fat of rams, says 1 Samuel 15 verse 22. Obedience to his voice, obedience to his word. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. So as the Israelites stood on the brink of a new era in their national life, in order to actually be the people of God, his special chosen people, rather than just another nation like all the others, they needed to be careful to obey so that it would go well with them. And centuries later, the psalmists reflected on this and realised the truth of it, that obedience to God's word is directly linked to the, blessing, the blessings from God's hand. I rejoice in following your statutes as one reflects uh, as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Psalm 119, verses 4 to 16, 14 to 16. And yet, we live in one of the most biblically illiterate times. And some of the Statistics are enough to perplex even those aware of the problem. A Barna poll indicates, indicated that at least 12% of adults believe that Joan of Arc was Noah's wife. Huh. Another survey of graduating high school uh, children revealed that over 50% thought that Sodom and Gomorrah were husband and wife. A considerable number of respondents to one poll indicated that the Sermon on the Mount was preached by Billy Graham. We are in big trouble. A people who don't know the word of God can't live by the word of God and so can't enjoy the blessings that arise from living by the word. The psalmist promised, I will not neglect your word. And that so needs to be the 
heart cry of the church today. We will not neglect your word. There are so many ways to not neglect his word. I'm personally blessed by the, uh, the Bible verses that Ollie sends out every morning via text. I've been immeasurably blessed by reading through the Bible in a year um, and, and coming to appreciate in a fresh way the major themes of, of the book. The, the path to becoming all that we are destined to be is marked by serious or by getting serious about reading the Word of God, studying and applying the Word of God. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I've taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. Life goes better when you do it by the book. So I I want to challenge you, us, this evening to take our Bible reading to the next level. Do you read the Bible occasionally? Decide tonight, I'm going to read it every day. Do you only tend to read the easy bits in the New Testament or maybe a psalm or two? Commit tonight to reading a book of the Bible that you have never read before. If you can't remember what one of those would be, just have a look at your Bible. It'll be the pristine pages, the ones that haven't been thumbed. Do you avoid reading the Bible altogether? Commit tonight to pick it up and read a chapter a day, starting with one of the Gospels. Have you ever read the whole Bible? Well, commit tonight to get through the whole thing in a year. Take it to the next level, starting tonight. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. Take that oath. Make that commitment that you will follow God's righteous word. Because when you do, your future as God intended it opens up before you. So let's pray together. And let's take a moment now as we each of us make that commitment that we freely and wholeheartedly decide to take, to take our Bible reading to the next level. Lord, I want to be someone who lives by the word. To obey is better than sacrifice. Help me to be obedient to what I read, mark, and inwardly digest. Take me to the next level, I pray, Lord, that I might become more of a student of your word. And reveal your heart, your plans, your purposes, your very identity to me in a deeper, fresher, clearer way as I read your word in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a challenge for every one of us. You know, the more I read the Bible, the more I just realize how awesome are God's plans, how amazing it all is and how he reveals it all to us in his book, the Bible. So let's get serious about going to the next level in our Bible reading. And let's worship the Lord again now before we come to communion.
Let's worship him in song. I just want 
caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for You don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you So we're coming to a time of sharing communion together and uh, this is just the, the most central thing that Christians can do together as we remember the sacrifice that Jesus has made for us on the cross, his broken body, his shed blood. But he did this, he did this so that to bring peace between us and our Father in heaven. Not that God hates us and this is placating him, but that he brings, he breaks down the, the walls, the barriers that there are by our sin. And he brings us into his presence and he enables the floodgates of heaven to be opened and God's very best, his shalom, his healing, his wholeness, his abundance, mm. his peace to be poured out upon us. And so as we come to this time of communion, let's just take a moment to remember that peace that has been won for us by Christ's death on the cross and to just bless those around us with a sign of that peace. And uh, we can do that in uh, our bubbles. And if you're watching this on your own uh, in front of a screen, then just, just bless those people that you can see on the screen with God's <laughs> peace. That is Ollie and me, and we really appreciate it. But right now, the peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. It's raining out there. Don't be distracted. So as we come to this time of communion, let me read you a, a few verses from Psalm 103. Shall we read, Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. I was reminded of those verses because, you know, the older I get, the more forgetful I get. <laughs> I don't think it's just me. And, um, <laughs> and we need things to help us remember, don't we? Because, you know, so much of what we hear, we forget within the first 72 hours, apparently. So we need these times where we can remember. And Jesus has given us a very clear practice to remember all his benefits, to remember what he did for us, to remember how he forgives our sins, to remember how he heals us, to remember that he's there. He crowns us with his love and compassion. And so on that night before he was betrayed and before he went to the cross, he shared a meal with his friends. And during that meal, he, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, as often as you do this, he said, do it in remembrance of me. Do it to remember that my body was broken for you. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the, the wine they were drinking. We've just got juice here today. And he poured it out and he said, when you do this, remember how my blood was poured out for you. And so regularly in church, we... We do break bread together and we drink juice, the wine together, just as an act of remembering 
what Jesus has done for us, remembering how he went to his death for us, but remembering that he was resurrected too, remembering that death did not have the last word, remembering that God's love did, it always does. So I'm going to take the bread. And if you've got yours at home, take it with me now. Just break it, break a piece off. If you're with somebody, maybe give it to them and say, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And if you've got your juice or your wine right there, again, take it. Pass it to each other and remind yourselves, remind each other, this is the blood of Christ shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you that by your sacrifice on the cross, we are free. By your broken body, we are whole. By your shed blood, we are clean. And as we go through life and we experience trials and opposition and difficulty and disappointments and we start listening to the negative voices within ourselves and spoken to us perhaps, that tell us what failures we are. May we remember that because, Lord, of your sacrifice on the cross, we are in fact trophies of your grace, trophies of your love, that we are whole, clean, redeemed, restored, forgiven people. We rejoice this evening, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. May we live in the reality, in the light and in the truth of that. And I pray it for all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. For I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind but now I see hallelujah Christ is risen from the grave hallelujah Christ is risen from the grave the prodigal is welcomed home the sinner now a saint for the God who died came back to life and everything has changed hallelujah Christ is risen from the grave hallelujah Christ is risen from the grave oh death where is your sting Oh, fear, where is your power? The mighty King of kings has disarmed you. Delivered and redeemed, eternal life is ours. Oh, praise his name forever. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. And on the day you call me in to heaven's sweet embrace, I'll see your scars, your open arms, the beauty of your face. 
Through tears of joy I'll lift my voice in everlasting praise. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, fear, where is your power? The mighty King of kings has disowned you. Delivered and redeemed, eternal life is ours. Oh, praise His name forever. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. And all throughout eternity, I saw. from the grave hallelujah Christ is risen from the grave and all throughout eternity a song will be the same hallelujah Christ is risen from the grave well what a great evening of worship of drawing close to the Lord what a great evening of reminding ourselves just how loved we are and how wonderful it is that God's grace reaches out to us and embraces us. We are loved. We are redeemed. We are clean. And so I really hope that this series on the Psalms has inspired you perhaps to go and read them again. I hope so. Um, maybe it's even inspired you to read the uh, Pentateuch again as well. Um, whatever, whatever way into the Bible you can think of, there's nothing so fulfilling and enriching as reading the Word of God. So let's take that to the next level, shall we? Can I just finish by reiterating something that um, uh, we were saying this morning? And that is that we have an opportunity to... Um, to, to give financially to the aid effort that's going on for India at the moment. As you know, India is absolutely overwhelmed by this current wave of coronavirus. Thousands and thousands are dying, and it's a country that's desperate, particularly desperate for oxygen. Um, the air that we breathe is, uh, <laughs> is not free for everyone, and they need... They need oxygen. They need oxygen concentrators as well. And so we have an opportunity to, to give to the existing work that's, um, that's going on. Uh, the Red Cross in particular are raising money to provide oxygen cylinders and oxygen concentrators, and we're going to be giving to that. But there's a, the, the way of doing that for, for Kingfisher, if you'd like to do it, um, we can do this all together, is online giving. Now, on our website, on our giving page... Um, that, that there's that opportunity just to get onto that. You'll see the details of the, the, the web address for that on the screen right now, just there. And uh, you can click on that and make a donation if that's what you feel led to do and join others who've already done that. And then we'll get all of that money off to, um, to the Red Cross to help in that effort. And just to say the church is, is, already, is also doing this from our, from our tithe offering as well we're making a donation so if you'd like to join in with that please do have a great week everyone have a really blessed week and stay safe and we will see you again next sunday
man of that. 